Welcome to the Lockdown Economy, a series of interviews by the think tank Alter Contacts, where the real entrepreneurs share their insights. My name is Yulia Skupchenko, and today my guest is Dr. Monique Wells, a co-owner of Entree to Black Paris. Hello, Monique. How are you today? Hello, hello. I'm doing fine. I am happily sitting here in my office in Paris and looking forward to speaking with you today. Excellent. That's great. And um, maybe we jump straight into it. Tell me, what is Entree to Black Paris? Well, I'm happy to tell you. So Entree to Black Paris is a travel service which provides walking tours, private walking tours and open walking tours on various themes that focus on the African-American and larger African diaspora, history, culture, and contemporary life in Paris. And how did you come up with this idea? Well, years ago, uh, my husband and I started a, a business called Discover Paris. And Discover Paris was all about creating personalized itineraries for independent travelers. And what we did was we would write personalized guidebooks for our clients based solely on their particular interests. So for example, if a client came to us and said, um, we're interested in photography or we're interested in architecture, then we would create um, a written itinerary for them based upon that particular interest and they wouldn't have to do anything else. And so more and more African-American travelers were coming to us and saying, we want to understand about Black Paris. We want to, want to understand about the history of African-Americans in Paris because it's um, fairly common knowledge that Paris is viewed as a racial haven for African-Americans. And so they wanted to know about that. And we got more and more and more and more requests for that. And so finally, we just decided that this would be what we would focus on. And right. we rebranded re because of that. So from photography and architecture tours, you rebranded into uh, the whole new culture um, in Paris. And uh, how well was it going uh, before the lockdown? So before the lockdown, we were doing quite well, actually. We have a, an open tour. When, when I say open, I mean that you can sign up for it online up to 48 hours before the actual tour date that you um, select. And you just show up at the starting point and you go. And then our private tours, you have to book well, well in advance, generally at least six weeks in advance. Um, um, and so all of that was going quite well. And then of course, on uh, March 17th, Paris shut down, the whole of France shut down. And we were not able to do those tours anymore. Our client base is 99% US um, citizens, US travelers. And so um, if you weren't here already, um, you know, you couldn't do that. And plus, uh, any kind of, you know, gatherings were, were banned. And at this point, we don't know when we're going to be able to um, begin again. So from the March 17th, um, you did not get any more uh, um, travelers coming for your tours. So you were not doing the tours because uh, the gatherings were prohibited and you, exactly. your clients also were not able to travel but for obvious reasons. Exactly. And uh, how, how did you feel and what was your first reaction, what first actions on your side, on the business front? Well, first we had to you know, understand what the French government was mandating for businesses like ours. Tourism across the board was just devastated but our business is very small um, and we needed to understand what if any kind of support the government could give to us because we are a French business. Um, so even though we focus on the African-American um, experience and the larger African diaspora, we are a French business as opposed to a lot of small travel businesses that um, perhaps would be American based. We are a French business, even though we have an American clientele and we needed to understand what the French government was mandating for us, not only in terms of what we could actually do with clients if we were to ever have any during this period, which obviously was not possible. So that was the first thing that got established, but also 
what the French government could do to support us as a business, as the government was supporting so many other businesses during this difficult um, financial time. And what did you find? So were there any uh, subsidies? Was there any program, uh, any consultations that they were doing? What was out there for you? So yes, actually, there was a financial subsidy um, that was based on for uh, month to month what you had done in X month last year. So for example, you know, we closed down on March 17th. So during the month of March 2019, what was your income, what was your revenue, and the government gave you a subsidy based upon that amount from last year. And so that was very, very welcome. Um, we really appreciated that and we've been able to take advantage of that. The Paris Office of Tourism has been very, very proactive in reaching out to businesses um, and helping us to prepare for the eventual return to, um, to work, you know. There will be people who can travel into France from the other Schengen countries. And so we do have a small percentage of clientele that come from other European countries. So we're gonna be starting to reach out more actively to those kinds of groups because we have no idea when Americans will be able to travel to Paris. And so does this, does this mean that uh, you would actually have to um, shift your direction in, in the kind of Value, in the value proposition that you offer. So previously you shifted from Discover Paris to Entree to Black Paris. And now with this change, uh, do you think it's gonna be uh, something more substantial than just temporarily focusing on other customers? Um, I think what we're gonna do is look at how we can do some more things online. For example, just a couple of weeks ago, um, an Australian podcaster who lives in Paris invited me to do a walk show with him. And we walked through some of the areas that some of our tours um, go to. And we talked about the, the Black Paris experience. And so that was fantastic. And that's something that we can look into doing more of. And also um, some presentations that we do for study abroad groups um, that I would deliver, you know, like in a classroom setting or you know, just inside of sort of a, a conference room setting, we're looking at doing those online. All right. And um, how do you feel about uh, the customers' uh, moods? Did you reach out to any of them when the lockdown was announced? Probably you had a lot of things booked. I mean, six weeks in advance, you, you must have had quite a lot of bookings. So what was the, what was the interaction with the clients? Well, first of all, clients were hopeful, you know, if their trip was like in June or July, we shut down in March. So people are saying, well, you know, maybe by June it will be okay. Maybe by July it will be okay. And time has marched on and of course it's not yet okay. And so, you know, they're writing to us or we're writing to them to say, um, you know, if you have to cancel your travel, if you put down a deposit, we will hold that for you until you're able to rebook. Sometimes the clients beat us and say, you know, I just got word yesterday that my flight has been canceled, so we won't be coming. And of course we figured that, but um, either way, you know, we're reaching out to each other and, and they are assured that if they put down a deposit, we will honor that for whenever they are able to book again. Um, there are people who are writing to us about, um, I should say, I publish a blog every week, every Thursday called Entree to Black Paris. And we send out a, an announcement to let people know that the blog is live. And so a lot of people write to us in response to those weekly blog posts saying, oh, you know, we had hoped to come uh, this summer. We're looking hopefully at Christmas now. So there's a lot of wistfulness, a lot of um, desire, you know, to get things back to normal so that we can get to Paris and. And, and visit and, and do your tours. Well, uh, I hope that uh, some of those wishes would come true soon because, I mean, Paris is a beautiful city. Wherever you come from, uh, it's a wonderful place to visit. Of course, all this border closing and flights canceling doesn't help anyone. And um, it's a shame to have such a beautiful weather and, and no opportunity to tour the town. Yeah. So um, could you tell me uh, about your competition? Because 
I know that in the tourist industry, the competition is pretty fierce. It could be. Uh, but in these times, uh, did something change? Well, there are a couple of companies that do the same types of tours that we do. But these companies are not French based. Of course, they still, um, they have no clients just like we have no clients because people can't travel. But I don't know um, how they're faring with regard to, you know, subsidies for their business because if their businesses are US based, there are some things that US, US government is doing to try to help small businesses, but I don't know that they've been able to, you know, take advantage of those. All right, so uh, you didn't uh, have anyone reaching out to you saying, let's, let's join uh, the forces, let's think of some online things to do together or, or some program? No, you know, I, and no, that's neither good nor bad. We, we all have our, you know, sort of uh, personal is not the right word because it is a business, but each business has its unique set of, of challenges. And so I don't pretend to know what those are and they don't know what ours are. Um, and so, you know, it's just working things out for yourself. If this becomes very prolonged and for the people who uh, work with US travelers, it is likely to become prolonged. Then those kinds of conversations are always open. We're, we're, we're open to, to having them. We'll just have to see how things go from month to month. Well, let's hope that uh, it will uh, normalize and maybe they won't be necessary because the business will pick up and will go well. And in that sense, I would like to ask you about the future. So what are the next few months uh, for your business? Well, we will continue to, um, we, we are developing new walking tours. So it was always our plan this year to introduce two new walking tours to our portfolio. We already have 13 distinct walks on the African diaspora, African American and the larger African diaspora in Paris. We also do some gourmet activities and those are sort of traditional French like wine tasting and um, gourmet walks, but we also do Afrocentric gourmet activities. And so, um, we, I work with the Academy of Culinary Art for the Creole World in Paris, and we have done things in the past and we hope to do things in the future. This is another French-based organization. And um, so we'll be talking about things that we can do going forward because the people who um, the Academy reaches out to, they're pri primarily Francophone peoples and uh, people who are already here. And so there might be some things that we can do there until, you know, while we're waiting for the international borders to open up again. And a few things that you just mentioned uh, sounds quite, uh, quite in, sound quite interesting. And uh, uh, maybe the people who are viewing us uh, from uh, uh, Europe and are planning to go to Paris would get curious and would reach out to you. I encourage everyone to do so, of course. That and, would be fantastic. Um, <laughs> yes, and uh, uh, I would like to, to finish off with a question about uh, the learning, the entrepreneurial learning, because uh, you've been doing this business for a while, you are an entrepreneur, and um, how, what did you take out from, from this last few months for yourself? Well, for one thing, um, entrepreneurship is truly a journey. Uh, it calls up everything that you have inside of you. It calls up everything that's good and strong in you. And it calls up all of your deepest fears and insecurities. And, you know, we, my husband and I run this business together. And we have had to sit down and just really, you know, take a good look at who we are and what we want to achieve with our business. We have discovered that our mission is going to remain the same. So sometimes these kinds of circumstances will um, have you look at your business and say, well, maybe we should change direction, you know, but we um, particularly in in light of everything that's happening with all the civil unrest in the world and the, the um, very, very bird's eye view uh, on what is happening uh, to black people in this world, not only in the United States, but in France and elsewhere. Um, it's more important than ever that we 
remain true to this mission. And so what we need to do is to figure out how to keep our business going in the short term and whether it's going to evolve into something different in the long term, still with this purpose um, of illuminating the history, culture, and contemporary life of African Americans and people in the larger African diaspora in Paris. Thank you. Thank you very much, Monique. And indeed, staying true to your mission that you chose for yourself is really important. Uh, consistency in entrepreneurial approach, despite everything, uh, it's, it's one of the key elements, right? And uh, I would like to thank you, Monique, for sharing your story with us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. If you would like to contact Monique, subscribe to her blog, or join one of her tours, her details will be in the description below the video. I invite you to like this video, share it with your friends, leave your comments about what you liked and uh, what you would like to see more of, um, and subscribe to our channel, of course. In the coming weeks, we're gonna have many more insights to share with you. So stay tuned, and bye. Bye.